okay we'll start now the regular uh, demo session guys okay so okay let's start so hi guys hi this is venkat i have around 11 plus years of it experience from the past 4 plus years i am working as a hadoop developer and big data architecture level i did the training for like so many mncs like tcs and some other companies also and from the cloud era, I'm a Hadoop developer certified, right? And I trained more than like thousand plus members doing as a mostly corporate trainings, online trainings. I had done so many RFPs and papers, everything. And right now I'm working as a TCS and as a project lead. This is about my experience, guys. Okay. So today we'll start about our demo session, right? So we'll start first, we'll see like basics, like what is the data? What is a big data? why we need a Hadoop, why not the other technologies. Okay, we'll discuss everything from basics to advanced. First, let's start about the basics, like what is the data? So guys, what is the data? Is nothing but gathering the information, right? So how we'll store our data in terms of the bytes, right? Bytes, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, Right and petabyte, and we have zettabyte, etabyte, and yottabyte. We have the future is about here, like Bruno byte here. So if you go with the byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, it's just a normal data. Like even our normal systems can easy to handle this data. What about this? This is a large volume of a data. It's a huge volume of a data. Everyone call this is as a big data, but this is not the big data. It is just simply a vast amount. So now let's see what is the meaning of the big data we have. If you knew to big data, what we'll think? We'll think it may be a software or a tool like that, right? But big data is not a software. It's not a tool. It's just simply a term which defines about the three characteristics here. One is the velocity of the data one is the volume of the data and one is the variety of the data. What is the velocity of the data? Like the speed of the data you're getting from the source to the uh, destination we have. For example, let's see, right now I'm in Hyderabad flying to the Bangalore. You know, the each and every second, right? All the fly information is captured and will analyze the data and will make a decision. Okay, so it means if you got the good speed, you can use it to analyze the data. What about the volume? In a big data, volume is nothing but this large volume we have. What about the varieties? You know, we have the three different types of varieties here. One is a structured data. One is an unstructured data. One is semi-structured data, right? So guys, what is structured data? Like the data, the format is like a tabular format. Everything on the structured format we have, right? What about unstructured? For example, see in a Facebook, we upload the videos, images, comments. It's all comes under the unstructured format we have. What about the semi-structure? So we have a JSON data, XML data, and we have a click stream data we have. So what is JSON? It's a JavaScript object notation data. Like it's an online data. Whenever you stream, you'll get this online data. You know XML, right? Extendable Markable Language. What about the click stream? Looks like a new keyword, right? Suppose, let's say, suppose I'm the customer. I'm doing the online shopping on the Amazon. I enter the site. I want to buy something. Right? So, after I enter the site, I didn't see any offers. So, what we'll do? We'll come out and log outside, right? After some time, if you observe, you'll get some automatically advertisements in the browser. How you got the ads in the browser? Whatever you did the mouse clicks on the website, the team is captured all of your data. 
they analyze the data they'll show you some offers to you to attract the customer again so the clicks is called as a click stream data and it is a semi structured format like this we have the three different types of the data we have structured unstructured and semi structured and the, the three are the different types of the factors here velocity volume variety this all the factors combination we call as a big data so if you see guys around the 4 to 5 years back we don't have this concept right from past 2 to 3 years onwards we are continuously hearing big data because the data is growing a lot continuously you know as per the idc analysis idc is the us based organization what they will do is right they will show you some you know um, they will analyze the data how much we are using overall the world so till 2007 we got the 0.9 gigabyte of a data till 2011 we got the 1.9 gigabyte of a data till 2012 we got the 2.9 gigabyte here if you see in a four years of the time they just increase the 1 gigabyte if you see within a one year we got the 1 gigabyte so what i am saying is the flow of the data is rapidly growing a lot continuously so here what's the main job is how to handle the big data right if see here 90% of the world data is just created in last 2 years we have so till now here we discussed about the volume getting the vast amount and the varieties different types of varieties and the velocity we have different uh, speed we will get here uh, this is called the three v's in a big data so we have one more v is called about the veracity it means is the data is really useful or not i got the data but as per my client requirement it's the best or not that is called about the veracity we have right so let's see from which source is getting this vast amount social media right it is a one of the biggest example of big data getting the vast amount from different sources like facebook twitter youtube and see the scientific instruments see nasa team every second they'll produce all the weather reports and everything right and you know for mobile devices you know we are sending around 11 millions of messages to mobiles in a one minute throughout the world so what i'm saying is like see in the olden days we have newspapers but nowadays we got so many blogs apps and the websites here all of us are generating here all of us are consuming here so what is the main challenge is how to handle the big data that's the main challenge we have so let's see from which sources we are getting this vast amount from the main frames client server internet internet and mobile devices and the social media and a cloud computing here every minute we got the 1 lakh tweets around 7 lakh updates in a facebook around 11 millions of messages to mobiles around 7 lakh updates in the google right so this is we call as a big data here you'll get the high speed huge volume and number of varieties so here the main job is here uh, main challenge is how to handle this big data is it possible can we control this big data for example guys i will say guys can you please stop using your facebook and mobile you guys going to stop it no right so we don't know how to control the big data so we are looking a solution to handle the big data so what is the meaning of handle what is the meaning of the handle the big data so to handle the big data means so we want to store this vast amount of the data and we need to process the all the varieties of the data 
so this is my job in a big data we have so here we are looking a solution to handle the big data okay first let's go with the SQL what is SQL it is a structured query language see the name defined it can access the only structured data right and you know the SQL can handle in terms of the bytes kilobytes megabytes till gigabyte only but what is my job in a big data I want to store the vast amount starting from terabytes I want to process about all the varieties means I have a structured unstructured semi structured right but see using SQL I can handle the only structure and that to limit amount only so it means using a SQL it's not possible to handle the big data like a SQL all the RDBMS systems are failed to touch the big data like Oracle SAP Teradata DB2 everything they have their own limitations for storage and they have their own limitations to process right so here my job is like you know how to handle the uh, big data we have so now let's go with the Hadoop so let's see what is the Hadoop Hadoop is a data management framework we have what is the meaning of framework let's say my laptop is a framework I have a keyboard mouse screen everything is indicated right same way Hadoop is a framework which consists of different different components we have doing on different different jobs like storing processing streaming scheduling like this we have different different components simply we can say Hadoop is a software framework and Hadoop is data management is nothing but in Hadoop right you can store any amount of the data you can process the any variety of the data so I got it right so what is my job in a big data I want to store the vast amount yes Hadoop can store any amount I want to process about all the varieties yes Hadoop can process any variety of the data right so now using Hadoop we can store any amount we can process any variety we have so first let's see like what is the history of the Hadoop how they got this idea about the Hadoop we have see Google team right there is the paper based on the paper Mr. Doc Cutting he got an idea so with the Apache team support there is the Apache Hadoop Apache Hadoop is our open source we have Apache Hadoop is a it's a main core Hadoop and it's a open source open source means free software right so Apache Hadoop is a free software we'll take the Apache Hadoop we'll customize we'll make our own flavor right so for example I'll take the Apache Hadoop I'll customize I'll add some new components I'll make it as Venkat Hadoop same way based on Apache Hadoop we got the flavors are like cloud era Hortonworks mapper these are all the different flavors we have so in all the flavors the best flavor is about cloud era we have so this cloud era team right they have taken the Apache Hadoop they customized they added some new components and they installed a Clorida manager and they installed as a pre-configured version pre-configured means everything is already installed the only job is simply open and play with that so just simply open and play with that if you have any issue so we have a Clorida team we have a Clorida team here they will get good support on that 
hot and works map or just like a normal flavors right so now next let's see like the common question like why hadoop is the best solution to handle the big data like i suppose let's go with the sql oracle sap hana teradata some examples let's go with the hadoop in hadoop right i will define about the five characteristics this will say hadoop is the best solution to handle the big data so one is about the scalability and flexibility cost effective fault tolerance high performance so what is scalability scalability means based on the client data we are taking a number of systems here when our client add the more data we'll take the more systems let's call the scalability we have flexibility means so as discussed in hadoop you can store any amount of the data in hadoop we can process any variety of the data but if you go all these we have limitations right storing in a process but see in hadoop you can store any amount you can process any variety we have cost effective so as discussed hadoop is a free software you know hadoop can run with the 1 gb ram 20 gb hard disk also but these are all it's so costly softwares and uh, hardware hardware also required the more hardware configuration right this call we have cost effective fault tolerance is important factor for example i have one file i am loading into one system if system crash we lost the whole file right but see in a hadoop when you load your file to the one system right the copy will go second system and the uh, uh, third system we have this call the replication factor in a hadoop we have three times replication factor recommended one second right so this is called the replication factor we have three times is recommended right three times is a recommended we have this called replication high performance suppose guys i am running my job in a one machine if the machine got failure my job will not stop my job will go to another machine to process that is called the high performance we have so these are all the five characteristics here we can say hadoop is the best solution to handle the big data we have so if anyone ask why hadoop is the best simply say these five characteristics we have this is a common faq question right and next so now we got the idea about the hadoop maybe you'll get confused like when like where we use hadoop so guys you know about oltp and olap right what is oltp it is a online transaction process what is olap it's online analytical process we have for example let's see suppose i am taking the bank application so i have a number of customers doing all the banking transactions here back end is updating into their different databases right this is called oltp right o 
OLTP. So it is a online transaction process we have. So you know guys these databases are like normal databases which can maintain a few months statements. Like a three months or six months or max one year. What the banks they will do after that? All the banks they will upload everything into a, a back end a big warehouse. That warehouse here we have. So what we are doing is, so we are loading into a back end big warehouse we have. So we'll store the data from these databases into big warehouse. We'll do analytics here. This is called OLAP online analytical process. So now here my question is, what Hadoop is? Hadoop is for OLAP using a Hadoop we are not doing any transactional data process using a Hadoop we are doing analytics here so it means using a Hadoop what we are doing is we'll store the data we'll store the data and we'll process the data and we'll do the analytics on the data we have storing and process and we we'll do analytics here so using a Hadoop we are doing this. Hadoop is the old app we have. Okay, so let's see in a Hadoop as discussed. It's a big framework. We have a number of components here. So basically we have two or the core components here. One is the HEDFS and one is the map reduce. So first from the client we got the data. First what we'll do? storage right next the client will say the requirements so we'll do processing right in a Hadoop whatever you do storage that storage is a part of HEDFS and the processing will take care by map reduce we have so first let's see about the HEDFS so first let's see about the HEDFS we have So HDFS is Hadoop distributed file system we have. It's the name defined. Parallel processing, right? So we are distributing data to the number of systems we have. For example, let's see guys from the client, I got the 100 GB of a data. So we'll take a number of systems here. Because we have a scalability, so based on the client data, we'll take number of systems. In a Hadoop in HDFS, each system we call as a data node. If you take my laptop, is like a one data node, a machine, nothing but. If you see in my laptop, we have C, D, E or the hard disk partitions, right? The same way in every data node, logically, internally, we have number of blocks available here. So guys, what is the Oracle block size? 4KB, right? So if you take the 100 MB file, how many blocks required in Oracle? Around 25,000 blocks required. Because in Oracle, the block says in a KB, but the file in a MB, so we need the more blocks to store the small file in Oracle. But see in Hadoop, see in HDFS, so we have 64 MB is a minimum default block size. So if you take the 100 MB file, how many blocks required? Just max two blocks required here. Why? Because in a Hadoop in HDFS, the block size is very high because we are handling the big data. So like this 64 MB is a minimum default block size. 128 MB is recommended block size. And 512 MB is a maximum block size. So guys, this question is you'll get in certification. Sometimes in certification, they're going to ask you about the block sizes. So depends upon the client data, depends upon the data, we'll take number of nodes we have. And internally, logically, so we have number of blocks here. So all this, we have number of blocks. All the blocks in the data nodes, all the nodes in the racks, all the racks in the cluster level. So, so we are distributing data to different different nodes logically internally 
into blocks. So let's see, suppose this is a cluster. These are all the racks and these are all data nodes. Logically, internally, we have a number of blocks. So let's see, so I'll, I'll show you like a small video how the IBM cluster is looks like. in Europe is that in 2020, 20% of all energy has to come from renewable energy. And a lot of those 20% is coming directly from wind. The only way we can maintain being in number one in modern energy is to stay ahead of our competitors using the latest technology. The most windy location may not be that location that generates the best revenue for the customer. So the siting of turbine becomes a very complex discipline. Wind in itself is kind of a volatile source. It fluctuates. We need to convince our customers that what we supply them is a reliable source of energy. And the only way you can prove reliability is by analyzing uh, the data you have available. We have the libraries of wind ready. We uh, estimate that we will be in the range of uh, 18 to. These are all the nodes we have. These are all the nodes. This is a rack. In each node, logically, internally, we have a number of blocks available. 24 petabytes of data. That is equivalent to, to watching 17 years of uh, high definition video. And this is a cluster. So these are all the physical machines to store our data into the clusters we have. So we'll see the more in-depth in the regular sessions. So now let's go with the next topic. We have map reduce. It is for the processing a data. So how will process? For example, let's see my laptop. Right? It will know only binary code, right? Right? So back end it will know only binary code. But what we are doing front end? So we have number of keys and function keys, everything, right? The same way in a Hadoop we will know only map reduce. But I know Java. Let's go with the Java. Let's go with the Java. We can write the coding part in a Java. Everything will go to map reduce and processing in the Hadoop system. Suppose I don't know Java, then how will process? You can go with the Hive. Hive is a warehouse. They have their own language called Hive Korean language. It's same like SQL we have. Just write the query. The query will go to backend driver and the driver is running on the map reduce in the Hadoop system we have. So you can go with the Java. If you don't know, then you can go with Hive. Suppose I don't know Java. I don't know about Hive also. Then you can go for a pig. Pig is a scripting language. Just write your coding here. Everything will go to map reduce in the Hadoop system. Java, Hive and Pig. These three are different ways of processing a data. Right, so suppose a small requirement in Java, you know, will take three to four hours time minimum. Because writing the coding part is a manual, compilation manual and execution is a manual part if you go with the Java. Right, so Hive, suppose if you go with the Hive, just write the query. Let's go into backend driver, right? The same job you can do in a hive, max half an hour time. The same job you can go with the pick max 15 minutes time. So this coding, so hive and a pick or 
you know taking very very less time because the coding part is a manual coding part is automated and execution compilation optimization execution everything is automated but see in java everything is a manual part so in these three the main important we have is hive because nowadays so most of the all the client requirements we are doing with the hive in big one so to learn the hadoop the basic prerequisite is about the basic sql is required here so next concept we have next component called we have scope so using a scope we can import the data from any database to hadoop and from the hadoop we can export to the any other database we have so scope is works like a etl we have importing and exporting the data importing and exporting the data we have scope it works like a etl so from the client right so we got the data we are using a hdfs we are storing and using map bridges we are crossing and a front end we are using different components like java hive and a pig to import and export we we'll use scope these are all the core components of the hadoop but you need to know about all the advanced also the advanced components we have are impala flume solar qz hc base jukeeper and yeah these are we have advanced components so what is impala impala is from the cloudera flavor it's like a minimum of uh, 20 times uh, and a maximum of 100 times it's a faster for trivial process right and next flume is for streaming the web data whatever you streaming store everything into solar so these both are for streaming and storing web data next hue is for a gui graphical user interface like web ui so till now we covered so many components but hadoop will work only in linux os so if you don't know linux then you can go for a gu so it's a graphical user interface we have and next uz is for the scheduling your job you can schedule your job you can start stop you can you know we can schedule like daily wise or weekly wise or monthly wise because end of the day right the client will ask you do everything as automated so you need to use a uz to schedule all the jobs in order hbase is like a no sql language it is a columnar storage we have so here we'll do the integrations between the hdfs to the hbase hive to the hbase and the pig to the hbase integration these are the different ways of you know to connect the which base we have to do these manipulations and uh, right for doing some transactional process jukeeper is for the cluster management we have and yarn is like a advanced of map bridges so from the client we got the raw data what we are doing with the hadoop we are using hadoop to store and process analytics by end of the client want to reports right but see in hadoop we don't have a reporting tool we don't have any reporting tools so we need to go to market if you see in a market we have so many tools available right but all will not support big data only a few bi tools this will support so in that the best tool is about like tableau tableau is one of the best reporting tool under the finder fortune compass us market tableau is one of that you will get the very very good quality of the reports using a tableau so guys here i'll cover the hadoop to the tableau live integration part live integration means whatever you do with the hadoop changes automatically my tableau will change this live integration we have and coming to the administration part you know we'll cover the three ways of installation one is a pre configured installation and one is a sudo mode installation one is a distributed mode pre configured means about the flavor installation which is already a pre configured just simply open and play with that sudo mode means i will take on empty linux i'll show you how to install all this step by step manually distributed mode means i'll take some four to five machines i'll show you how to make our own cluster 
So if you go anywhere guys, no one will cover the three in the same course. I'm covering here because we don't know because sometimes you know the client will say I don't want any flavor, let's make your own flavor. So you need to get the grip on the uh, manual flavors also. So here guys I'm covering as administration part, I'm covering as development part, covering as a BA tool like Tableau, business intelligence tool. So covering as a Hadoop uh, a analyst position. So end of this course guys, you guys are eligible to go by developer, by admin or by analyst also you can do it. Depends upon your experience, we can do it. And the new course I added into this course is called the Spark. So this is also available in this same. So I'm covering with different different uh, tools, different different components also. Spark is a different course, Tableau different course. I'm adding to make a single course because to get the good expertise on end-to-end -end solution. So in the Spark we have, we'll see the uh, Spark SQL, Spark Scala code, um, right? And the Spark RDDs we have and Spark SQL and Spark Streaming, um, right? And Machine Learning, this is all we will get. Spark it off, this is all we have. So this overall we have the course is like 60 hours duration. 60 hours duration, daily it's a one hour session, a weekend you can plan two to three hours depends on topic wise. Okay, so from the Clodera guys I'm a Hadoop developer certified, so if you're interested I'll guide you certification process and everything step by step. Okay, so coming to the, you know, the software we have, so this is our Clodera flavor, the same flavor I will install you on your personal laptops also. Okay, so this is the Clodera ones. Here we'll do practice everything. So once you start your manager here, you'll see here all your services and health reports, everything. Then that you can start your uh, coding and everything in this VM. So coming to the software's folder, right? The materials and folders, everything, right? So I'll share the two drives of two ways of drive access. So one drive access which contains all about uh, Right, uh, the 15 GB drive. This drive contains all the materials, all the software, all the materials, all the softwares we have. Everything in this available. Right. So this is the drive. Uh, this drive contains 15 GB of materials which contains all the softwares, materials, interview questions on topic wise, everything we have. And another drive, another drive which contains all about daily classes, recorded videos. Daily I will record our sessions right? and um, you will get that video, PPT, notepads, everything you will get in this. So overall this will take 60 hours around. Right, so overall uh, this will take 50 hours duration, 60 hours duration, so which contains all these daily folders or recording sessions, everything in this, okay. So and end of the course guys, I'll help you to make a resume preparation, interview questions, everything, mock, mock uh, yeah, two seconds, take it and uh, I'll, so this is everything, so please ask me if you have any questions.